on Holy Thursday night, in my last talk, I touched on an idea about a spiritual treasure box. I talked about a treasure box that basically sits in everybody's home. Their home is their heart. And in their heart, there's a spiritual treasure box. So imagine having this spiritual treasure box in your house, sitting there in a basement underneath some shelf, I don't know, clothes stocks put on top of their books, who knows, all kinds of stuff just sitting on top of it, collecting dust, getting, uh, you know, dirty, just sitting there doing nothing. And you know this box is sitting there, but you don't care to go look at this box. You say, who cares? You know, you're not curious about what, what might be in that box, how it might benefit you, you know, how it might change your life. You know the box is there and you're content to know it's there, but you don't do anything about it. And we all have this spiritual treasure box. And the key, the key to that tr uh, treasure box is this. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who died upon a cross for our sins. See, God created us in the beginning, Adam and Eve, and he gave them a plan to basically say yes to his will. And all would be fine. But instead, they said no to that plan, and they were enticed by Satan, and they thought they could be like God, and they thought they knew better than God, and they just went for it. And unfortunately, they brought upon the human race original sin that all their children leading up to us today inherit. This uh, spiritual um, dent, you could look, think of it like, think of a frying pan that has a dent into, in it. And everything you try to bake in that frying pan is going to come out with that dent. That dent represents um, original sin that we all inherit. And the only thing that can take out that dent was God's only begotten Son. As we read in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave up his only begotten Son, that whoever should believe in him shall not die, should not perish, but shall have eternal life. So Jesus takes that dent. He bangs that dent out. Because he nails it to the cross, all of our sins, all of all that would separate us from God, all that would jeopardize our eternity with God, all that would cause us to go to hell, Jesus nails it to the cross. All we have to do is accept this great gift, accept that key, take that key and open up that spiritual box, which is Jesus Christ, and be forgiven of your sins, be cleansed of your sins, be born again as a child of God. And to live out this faith that he calls us to. To live out his will. To say yes to God. Now also, Jesus is the box. And But what's inside that box? Well, inside that box is abundant graces. The graces he gives us through the fullness of the truth that he gives us through the Catholic Church. He alone established the Catholic Church, one true church, 2,000 years ago. And invested into that church the fullness of his truth. And these are abundant graces. It means to grow in holiness. It means to benefit our soul here on earth, but not only on earth, but more importantly in heaven, and even benefit one another. We can help others to get to heaven. Um, so some of the things I just want to brush upon that might be that you can think that's in this box that you might want to look into and check out are, are you know the teachings of the church. So many rich blessings and teachings of the church to, to help us understand and grow closer to the love of God, to, to, to a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Um, the sacraments, basically those are outward signs of inner, uh, of inner grace that we receive from, from God. Um, all, all, all the graces that we get from God come through Jesus Christ. He gives us baptism where we become children of God. We're born again spiritually because, like I said earlier, we are all born spiritually dead because of the, the original sin of Adam and Eve that we inherit. And to take that original sin off of our souls, to be made born again as, as adopted children of God, we must be baptized. And so we get the sacrament of baptism. We get confirmation where we receive a deep outpouring of his abundant graces through the, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, uh, empowers us to deepen our love for him, to deepen our faith, to go forward and boldly proclaim the faith, to share our faith with others. 
And I mean, it's it's a beautiful spiritual uh, uh, awakening. It's a beautiful thing. Um, we also have the sacrament of, of Holy Eucharist, which is Jesus Christ himself, because he promised his apostles that I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you orphans. I will send the advocate to lead you, the Holy Spirit. And, he, and when he promised not to leave us orphans, he promised to be with us for all time. And he gives us the Holy Eucharist where he makes present his very self. The risen Jesus Christ, the same one who walked the earth, is made present in the blessed Eucharist. Um, body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus is present in the Eucharist. And this Eucharist, we can spend time before Jesus' Eucharistic presence in the Adoration Chapel. Um, we can go there before our Lord and just lay our lives out to Him. We can praise Him. We can adore Him. We can we could just be in holy silence in front of His presence. Just like somebody sitting there soaking up the sun's rays on a beach gets a suntan. Well, we could soak up the, the rays of Jesus Christ and get a, a spiritual sun, suntan in, in, a, you know, in, in adoration before His Eucharistic presence. Um, we have the great um, sacrament of confession where... You know, because none of us are perfect. We fall, we screw up, we get back up, and we can go back to God. We can be um, forgiven and cleanse of our sins, and God can give us abundant graces. He cleanses us of our sins. Um, he strengthens us to go forward and, and you know to sin no more. But if we mess up, we go back to um, to confession and we repent and and we receive those beautiful graces that He gives us in confession, which I uh, talked about in my um, other talk on confession the other day. John chapter 20, verses 21 through 23. Um, the church has, in this spiritual box, there are many devotions. We have the Holy Rosary where we we um, meditate on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and His Blessed Mother. We have um, the Stations of the Cross. We have all kinds of novenas and different prayers that lead us, you know, just lifts our mind up to God and, and helps us to, to praise and adore Him. We can just praise God in our own words. Um, we have the Holy Bible. We can meditate on His Word. We have the, the saints, the examples of the great saints, those who imitated Christ. We, we, they're great role models. We can look up to their examples. Um, all these beautiful treasures in this box, that treasure box that sits there, that waits for you to take the time to open it up and to delve in and, and experience all these riches and, and, and start applying them to your life and benefit your soul here on earth and more especially in heaven. So I hope that you open up that spiritual treasure box and accept this gift, this great gift of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in the fullness of his truth in his Catholic Church. I, I pray that from the bottom of my heart that you accept that great gift. Don't let that spiritual treasure box sit there and collect us. God bless you. Have a great day. And until next time.